You're probably someone who takes glycine every single night for its sleep enhancement and also longevity anti-aging benefits. But today I'm excited because I'm sharing with you a glycine metabolite called glyoxylic acid, which appears to exert an anabolic effect and may even be a popular ingredient in various pre-workout products or perhaps even as a post-workout recovery agent. So what is glyoxylic acid? Well, glyoxylic acid, also called oxo oxoacetic acid or formal formic acid, is an organic compound involved in the glyoxylate cycle, which is a variation of the citric acid cycle. Now, in the body, it is a metabolite of glycine. Now, the simplest amino acid essential for neurotransmission, collagen synthesis as a building block for protein, um, as important for detoxification, antioxidant production, energy production, immune system support, blood building, and so much more. So obviously glycine, many of you know about the benefits of glycine, and we're looking at very high doses of glycine can be utilized without any real side effects. Typically, 6 to 10 grams can be used daily without any real dangers. So what I'm excited about is this glyoxylic acid. Now, glyoxylic acid, what's notable about it is that the traditional meaning of glyoxylic acid. In traditional medicine, glyoxylic acid has been used as a diagnostic tool. In primary hyperoxaluria, levels of oxalic acid are elevated in the urine. One of the possible reasons is an error in the metabolism of glyoxylic acid leading to the elevation which can lead to kidney stones. In diabetes, high levels of glyoxylic acid are sometimes used as a marker for the detection of early stages of the disease. Metabolic issues that lead to the overproduction of glyoxylic acid seem to also be involved with the pathology of diabetes. In the body, there are two ways glyoxylate itself can be synthesized, as you can see in the image shown here. So we have peroxisome and mitochondrion. Furthermore, the involvement of glyoxylic acid in disease is surprising when considering this following study. So here we can see a study that was titled Glyoxylic Acid and Alpha Keto Acid Metabolite Derived from Glycine Promotes Myogenesis in C2-C12 Cells. So we can see what they found here was that glyoxylic acid promotes myoblast differentiation without cytotoxicity and glyoxylic acid promotes mitochondrial biogenesis via an increase in the levels of representative mRNAs. Um, and in addition, they noted that glyoxylic acid increases the intracellular levels of several amino acids and their metabolites, and GA ameliorates DEX-induced muscular atrophy. So here's a study on glyoxylic acid's effects. Now, when observing young muscle cells in vitro, meaning in a test tube in artificial conditions, these researchers were able to observe the effects of GA, namely an increased amount of myosin heavy chain 2, which indicated that contractile muscle tissue has been developed or built. In addition, an increase in the amount of mitochondrial DNA, which is likely a stimulation of mitochondrial biosynthesis, allowing muscles to make more energy. An anti-catabolic effect was also observed when administering a toxic synthetic hormone called dexamethasone, which catabolizes muscle cells. According to the researchers, the effect of dexamethasone was almost completely neutralized, which indicates a very powerful effect. So what does that actually mean? So if we look at dexamethasone, it's actually uh, like an anti-catabolic hormone that can be used uh, to basically replicate what it's like to live with high cortisol levels. So if you're chronically stressed, and you have elevated levels of cortisol, most people know that high levels of cortisol can actually uh, degrade muscle tissue. But what they found here was that this glyoxylic acid actually reversed or blocked the deleterious effects of cortisol on muscle, gro uh, muscle degradation. So what we're seeing here is that it potentially exerts an anti-catabolic effect. There is a lot of information that I present here on my YouTube channel. However, if you want to know exactly what protocols are best for your unique biology, then I suggest booking in a free Boost Your Biology Strategy session with a senior member of my team, as we'll start to map out and strategize the best action plan 
for your unique biology. You'll see that linked down below in the video description. So who could this be used for? The study was originally published with regards to chronic kidney disease, CKD. People who suffer from CKD are often advised to restrict dietary protein intake since the kidneys are not able to properly deal with the waste products of metabolism, especially those of protein metabolism. This acute sparing of kidney function degrades the function of all other bodily systems over time. However, since the amino acids that proteins are made of are required in every imaginable metabolic pathway, Finding ways to reduce the damage done by protein restriction is the main angle from which these researchers are looking at glyoxylic acid. Technically, glyoxylic acid is a metabolic precursor to oxalic acid, which is one of two necessary components that forms kidney stones, the other being mishandled calcium. In the study itself, the authors write that in order to determine the viability of glyoxylic acid to be used as an anabolic and anti-catabolic agent, there needs to be a study on the effects of long-term oral intake of glyoxylic acid on muscle mass and strength. They are also aware of the fact that GA may contribute to the formation of kidney stones, but studies have been done so far to investigate whether this happens in context when people are in fact ingesting the GA. So in terms of dosages, I guess it's very preliminary phases with glyoxylic acid, although I do think that in the next couple of years, we're gonna to start to see some major brands introducing glyoxylic acid into their products to be utilized as part of their recovery formulas or perhaps as a natural muscle building agent. Now, obviously glycine does exert some very favorable effects on uh, skeletal muscle cell health and also lowering cortisol by itself. So most people are probably wondering, can we just get the benefits from just regular glycine? Now. I do think that this glyoxylic acid, when we use a metabolite, it's more of a direct punch, more of a, an acute booster. Whereas if we're looking at glycine, we're hoping that we're you know readily converting it into this glyoxylic acid. So I do think it's worthwhile maybe even stacking glycine with glyoxylic acid as a anti-cortisol stack that you might want to include in your nighttime uh, protocol. But otherwise, I will definitely be keeping a lookout for further research on this particular molecule. As you guys know, I'm very excited about new and novel ingredients. And that is one of the reasons why I'm sure you follow me on here on uh, uh, YouTube and also on my Instagram channel. So I'm looking forward to hearing what you guys have to say about it. Let's uh, leave your comment down below. Otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next video.